Hi guys, good evening and welcome to the We Are House of Medics YouTube live. So joined with me today is Dr. Emeka, but just before we get into the questions and everything like that, if you can tune in from your own phone, your own gadget, your own computer, your own iPad, whatever you might have, and give us a thumbs up on this um, stream right now, if you can. I'm expecting at least 50, so if you can do that for me now, that would be amazing. So again, guys, thank you so much for joining us this evening and sorry we're a bit late, Emeka. It's your fault, so I'll let you apologise to our viewers. Apologies, apologies. <laughs> it's been a crazy day. <laughs> sorry, but I'm not taking the heat for the late then. <laughs> so yes, Dr. Emeka, let's, let's just get straight into it. So yep. obviously in your name, you're Dr. Emeka. Yeah. What, what kind of doctor are you? So um, for, for, for our viewers who are here every two weeks, you guys know that I'm, I'm a creative, so I do marketing and I'm in the creative industry. So I don't know anything about medicine apart from the doctors and the people that I live with. So I know you're a doctor. Yeah. So I'm aware that there's different specialities in yeah. people's fields. So what what do you specialize in? So my specialty would be emergency medicine. So A&E. Oh. Yeah. So oh. um, if you go okay. to A&E and you're triaged by a nurse or whatnot, and often you'll be sent to see a doctor. You're that, one of those doctors? Yes, yeah, correct. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to go through it in my head. So you get seen by someone first, and then you go yeah. to someone else after, and that it, after it kind of it, it depends how you come to any. So mm. sometimes if you come via like ambulance and paramedics, they'll book you in triage with uh, the nurse, and you, know, you go straight and see a doctor. Mm. Or if you come in by yourself, sometimes okay. you might see a doctor, sometimes you might see a nurse, sometimes you might see another professional. Mm. It depends, but yeah, usually with sick of patients, okay. you'll be seeing a doctor. Okay, so it's like fast medicine, basically. Yeah, it's very yeah. high. It's very high pace. It's very yeah. fast. It's very differentiated so you see loads of different cases mm, in the day okay. which i quite like yeah okay very, so you like the variety i love the variety okay okay cool so how did you get into the field of wanting to be a, a doctor a medical profession um so i come from a medical family so my dad's actually a doctor oh, he's nice. an obs and gynae consultant so i knew Wait, quite a so lot about medicine let's go through that so gynae is gynecology yeah gynecology right and the other thing was uh ob obstetrics so it, wait, wait wait that's fake like legs and stuff no, that's no. Prost that's prosthetics. <laughs> uh, okay. so, so prosthetics are uh, <laughs> limbs are basically yeah fake limbs okay. and obstetrics and Obstet gynecology. Obstetric. Yeah, obstetrics okay. is like the study of pregnancy, pregnant woman. Oh, I was way off. And gynecology studies women's health. Oh wow. So basically, okay. women's health. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So how long have you been in the field for? How long have you been a doctor for? I uh, since twenty sixteen. So that's coming on like five years this summer. Okay, so and then you studied before that, right? Yeah, med school. So okay. I did five years of med school in Norwich. Okay. In University of East Anglia, UEA. Nice. Norwich Med School. So five, yeah, so ten years pretty much now. So you studied for five years? Yeah, I did five years. Sick <laughs> deck. <laughs> Sorry, okay, so you done that in for college, for uni? Yeah, for university. And then in college, what, what did you study? Um. So, yeah, so I went six, to sixth form. Mm. So it was part of my sexual school. I went to sixth form. I did, uh, for my A-levels, the three sciences and a, a subject called critical thinking so basically in my school um if you scored a certain amount in your gcse's mm. instead of doing general studies with the rest of the year group mm. you were put in a specialist class called critical thinking okay so, so what you're trying to tell us that you're quite smart then i i, I did work i did kind of well at school <laughs> i did all right yeah okay. i did all right back in the day yeah okay, so cool. that's what i did for my levels then from there nice. med school Okay, so how did you know you wanted to actually study medicine? Was it because your dad did it? Did you get pushed to do it? Honestly, or? there were many, many factors. So one, I knew a lot about it. Mm -hmm. And I was able to have work experience at a very young age. Okay. From like the age of 17, I was exposed to good work experience. Two, I liked uh, What kind sports. of work experience was it? I was in hospital. So I was oh, actually wow. in, um, I was in about hospital and clinics and then eventually in theatres. So um, I then... So I shadowed my dad for some clinics mm. and then some of his colleagues who were doing theatre lists, mm. so operations. Okay. They let me scrub up and go in and see it and I thought this is right. you know, okay. that's really cool. And I like the competitive nice. aspect of medicine. Yeah. And the fact that you're always learning and yeah, it's so yeah, varied. Yeah. Mm. So I didn't know what kind of doctor I wanted to be, but I was like, let me get a medical degree mm. and take it from there. Okay. Okay, got you. Nice. So just gonna go another step back. So you said that um you had some work experience. Mm -hmm. How did you find out though that, okay, hmm, I think I might actually want to go and study medicine. How did you even know about going into hospitals for work experience? I narrowed it down. So I wanted to be an athlete. I played okay. a lot of sports. I wanted to go pro um, athletics or football. Nice. And I wanted to go to America and play basketball. Mm. I had a potential um, 
scholarship mm. to go to uni in Connecticut. Okay. For like a um, like a prep school. But it would have meant sacrificing a lot of my studies, mm. which my parents didn't want me to do. So, so how probably you when, when that happened? I was like 15, 16. Okay, so, so they didn't want GCSEs, you to... Yeah, I would have had to drop oh. a lot of the GCSEs I did. Mm. And I would have had to go to a specialist sixth form and I wouldn't have been able to do maths, chemistry, biology and physics and critical mm. thinking, which okay. I did. Mm. So it would limit my chances of getting into med school. Got you. But increase my chances of getting a potential scholarship overseas. Yeah, got you. So I had to pick one of the two. Mm. And then for me, I, I liked medicine. I've always liked it since I was young. Yeah. And I always knew that could be... That could be, you know, a career path for me. See my dad do it. Yeah. And so... So yeah. he was inspired by your dad, basically. Yeah, he yeah he was my main inspiration okay. in terms nice. of medicine. Okay. And then, obviously, being around other doctors as well. We've had other doctors in the family. Mm. So I was like, yeah. This is something I want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So, um, let me actually go on to the next question, whether I want to ask you. Um, junior doctor show. Yeah. That's that's something you, you was on. Talk to us yeah. about that. Did you apply for that? Did you get scouted for that? And I heard that you, the, you used, to yeah. dance, used to dance on the show a lot. It was a little bit both. So um, <laughs> they, 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 I, I was working in Wolverhampton as an F1, which is basically your first year as a doctor after uni. I was working in New Cross Hospital and they just happened that the show was doing their fourth series and decided to film it there. And so okay. they put out um, a call to everyone who's in their first year or second year medicine who was interested in being on the show to put themselves forward. Mm. You put down your CV, like what kind of doctor you want to be, what your interests are. Yeah. And then I think they went and did like a media search about me because they knew a lot about me oh, from okay. my Facebook. Back when Facebook was oh, really okay. a big thing. So they you've always been quite active Facebook. on your on your social media. Yeah. So I did okay. a lot at uni because I did like obviously loads of sports, being mm. sporty. I also did like a lot of modelling and stuff at uni, and I did. I was very active at university, so I was always doing different things. I think they saw that and saw that I had the medical side, but also had yeah, the personality, yeah, the, personality, the, personality the extra personality. curricular side. Right. And I've never really been camera shy. So I think a lot of people thought it was going to be very daunting because we were obviously in our first year. So everyone's still trying to learn and everyone mm. can make mistakes. Mm. And they literally followed you around with a camera yeah. for like your whole shift. And even when you're at home oh, a lot wow. of the time. And yeah, so it was, it was very daunting. But me, I was you happy to do it. Yeah, I loved it. it. I loved <laughs> it. So... And they told me, yeah, we want you to be on the show. Yeah, and okay, nice. I did that. And as for dancing, I'm I'm a very like active kind of person anyway. So it's, I just said, you know, I'm just going to behave how I normally do. Yeah. So are you going to? That, that, are you going to? Not quite now. Gonna... No. <laughs> not by a little quick shuck and jive now. But yeah. <laughs> so shooting. yeah, sometimes on nights I'll just be hanging with the nurses and the healthcare workers on. Yeah. And we'll be bantering and dancing or do whatever. Mm. If obviously there are no um, patients that need us at the time and. They just captured it on, on the TV, show, yeah, yeah, and it became like a meme type thing, yeah. and uh, and then it kind of blew up from there. But yeah, okay, nice. So you said that you was quite well known on Facebook, or your Facebook was quite big before. Kinda. So would yeah. you say that social media has really helped you in your career, or do you think that that you've yeah. kind of got like a TV personality now and a doctor career? Like, how how do you? Because Emeka, I've got to be on this TV. There's a lot of topless videos. <laughs> but oh, your Instagram and your TikTok for are, are you trying to get the lady doctors like talk talk us through what Hon honestly no it's more for fitness so obviously okay. I was really big into sports and oh fitness yeah you and said health. The, the football thing. yeah I was really big into right. sports and fitness and health and when I started working in medicine I wasn't able to play the sorts of games that I used to in school so right. in school I represented my university in rugby football athletics and mm. basketball okay so you try you basically try and merge yeah your fitness with exactly with medicine your, okay good. and that's why teaching fit health is if you're in shape and you look good and you're in shape mm. you're more likely to get through to your patients and you're following about their health and their fitness good. and their bodies so that's kind of where it Got you. kind okay. of combined them lovely so how do you actually find time to like go to the gym and stuff? Like what, what are your normal working hours? Because I know Dr. Emma, Dr. Abe, yeah. Dr. Elia, they have really long days. Yeah, so how mine's... do you find the time to, do you have a home gym? Or... As in, uh, yeah, a lot of times so I work with a company called Freeletics who basically work, have workout plans for home gyms. And like, oh, okay. well, yeah, so basically at home, very minimal equipment, minimal time. Mm. You can still get a really good workout in. I have a gym membership, um, obviously at Gymbox and, I've worked for a gym called Unit One Fitness, and so when I can, I get to the gym. But as you've seen from today, my days can be quite haphazard. So I can mm. be in different places at different times, yeah. and I'm leaving city again tomorrow. 
sort of thing and I'll be mm. back later on. So Do you like I, that though? Do you yeah, like with... I do. Mm. I do. I enjoy it. It's my personality, it works. It's kinda of like A and E. It's mm. always different and it's always fast and something always happening. Because yeah. I get bored quite easily. So okay. it works for me. And mm. that's why combining it is difficult, but mm. I do make sure I work make out. Time for it, yeah. yeah, every day. Yeah. Can I can I just ask you about um mental health? Yeah, sure. Um I, I know that a lot of people go to the gym for yeah. their mental health. Does does that help you as well? Obviously 100%. you're always in and out. Yeah. How 100%. does that help your mental health? For me, it's just the endorphin rush and I just feel like I've achieved something when I and when I'm feeling physically fitter and looking physically better, mm. my mood changes. You could just see it. So when I first started working as a doctor, because of how busy I was and how difficult things were, getting to grips, I didn't have the time to go to the gym and I felt my physical health drop. And I felt my mental health and my mood drop. I wasn't mm. really happy. I wasn't mm. really myself. And I knew why, because I wasn't working out. I wasn't playing sports. I wasn't feeling physically fit. So mm. for me, the two are tied. Okay. Physical health and mental health are one and the same. So if one, it's very hard to see somebody who's really, really in shape and enjoying working out, but it's depressed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Got you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, thank you for that. Um, guys, also keep sending your questions in. I'm getting quite a few questions. I know we don't have a long time, so I'm going to try my best to run through the questions no and problem. the end. I've got a few more questions I'd like to ask you before we do wrap up the... Yeah, yeah, sure. Thing. Um, let's talk about... Do you have an accent, by the way? That's a twang or something. Have you got I an do? accent? People, people, like people, up north. Yeah, people say I do have a little bit of a twang. Yeah. I lived in Scotland for 10 years. Yeah, you've growing got up. an accent. So, and with the schools we went to, it's a little bit different. Got you. Okay. So, yeah, yeah something my, to pick up on it. My family are from up north, so... Whereabouts? Sound like Nottingham. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, mentorship. Have you ever had a mentor in, in the med- medical field? Yeah, technically, when we came into uh, uni, uh, in our first year, we were given a mentor who was in their fourth year. Okay. So, every yeah, every UE student, medical student, gets a buddy. So, like okay. a buddy system where they tell you, okay, this is how exams work and this is how uni works. Mm. And they kind of walk you through. One of my, uh, I'm still in touch with, one of my mentors, a guy called Lecce, he's a cool guy. Mm. And he was a fourth year medic, or fifth year medic when I first joined. So you're still in touch with him now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. He's still cool. He's working as an ENT doctor. He works in ears. He knows him to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Nice. Yeah, and we're, we're still in touch to this day. And he was okay. like me because he's Nigerian. He was very sporty and mm. he used to do a lot of like athletics for the uni as well. So, yeah, so you kind of clicked. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, how do I combine obviously studying with medicine yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. working? He told me, okay, this is how you need mm. to do it. Is what you need to prioritize so yeah okay. it was good and then obviously when i got to my um fourth year and fifth year i then had my own mentees mm. who i then mentored yeah similar to the guy actually you know the guy called paul who's another nigerian dude in the med school yeah. who's very tall like me and played on the basketball team too nice so he, yeah he's now working i think he's in his first year oh, okay as a doctor now up in uh, norfolk so yeah okay it's, Lovely. it's a good system Cool. So another question. Mm-hmm. Um, you said that you had your buddies or mentees in, mm-hmm. in when you were studying. What what about now? Do you think it's it's still important in your field? And obviously you're in the limelight as well. Yeah. And um, you're really out there on social media. Yeah. Um, I would say. Um, do you think it's for, it's important that um you mentor people now? Yeah, hundred percent. Do you I mentor think, people now? Yeah, yeah. I do informally. So I have a lot of people who are obviously um. Uh, beginners in medicine who have just graduated who always ask me questions and ask me for advice and help and my brother's actually in med school as well he's in his fourth year so i'm there to obviously informally mentor him too so when i have time i definitely do respond and help people in which ways i can then send them resources and tell them good ideas of where to go for different things so yeah i think it's important to definitely give back help those who obviously need it yeah need a bit because you you were there at one stage so you know how they feel Mm, so okay well you sound like you're busy all the time (laughs) we're gonna go into what your Mm. your hobbies are what do you do for fun apart from tiktok stuff Uh, well obviously sports but that's a given and then only just hanging out with my friends when i can Mm. that's why the pandemic was so hard because Mm. one of the i'm very social so i like to go to events and stuff like yeah with my friends and obviously we didn't have any so I'd catch up with them on house party or mm. yeah, well, Zoom or whatever. Yeah. I hate that. Apple. But so yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Okay, so you just go out and chill with your friends. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so 
actually, I want to touch on something you just said. You said the pandemic was was quite hard. Yeah. Um, what did you do in terms of medicine or I don't know your social media or anything to kind of better yourself in in that time? Honestly, I was just doing a lot of working out mm. at home. Okay. That's what kept me going. I, we were very busy because I was working on a COVID ward. So I'm an emergency oh, wow. doctor, but I was redeployed to help work on a respiratory mm. ward, high dependency respiratory ward. So I was there for most of the pandemic. Was a high dependent respiratory respiratory is yeah. your breathing isn't it yeah okay. so it's the lungs so obviously covid is a virus that respects your that affects your respiratory tract mm. your breathing at a cellular level in your lungs so we had very very ill patients who basically couldn't breathe mm. and we were oxygenating them and proning them and ventilating them on the ward so that's basically what i was doing for most of the pandemic mm. okay awesome so I want to go to um, some pros and cons okay. um, of your role. So let's start. Let's start with the cons. <laughs> what, cons. what 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 don't you like about being in the medical field? I'm not sure if you have watched any of our previous videos, but I know a lot of the uh, medics that I've spoken it, to. It can get it can get very intense, and the consequences are very great. Mm. So it could put you under oh, quite okay. a bit of stress and anxiety because mm. when you do, if you can't really afford to make mistakes, because when you do make mistakes, people suffer. And then yeah, it's big time, yeah. yeah. So that is a con, definitely, with mm. medicine. But it's a con you go in knowing that you have to handle. Yeah. Like anything. Um, it can be very time consuming. You have to sacrifice a lot, especially in med school and your first couple of years working. I remember my friends were doing stuff like going on holiday and mm. doing a, a bunch of different things. And I couldn't do it because I was studying or working. So you do have to sacrifice a lot. And that's a big con as well. Mm. Okay. So mm. pros? Pros is very rewarding, very, very rewarding. Like treating patients and seeing people get better from interventions you've done is really, really rewarding. I think that's probably the best thing about it. Yeah. And obviously it's a respected degree in the community. It's good. Mm. It's a very stable job. You know, it's very transferable skills. So I can go work almost anywhere in the world. Yeah. Providing you do the exams and whatnot, the courses. Because yeah. everyone will always need doctors. Exactly. Especially in emergency. Very, true. So very, very true. That's definitely a pro. So you've been in the medic for five years now. <clears throat> Um, you've been in the medic field for five years now yeah i know this might sound like a stupid question but are you still enjoying what you do do you love being a doctor do you actually have the, Honestly, like, a i do for it? i really do yeah. love it especially because i combine it with my mm. media mm. i think if i was just doing medicine it'd be a bit too one-dimensional for me but because i combine it with fitness and fashion and media mm. and all that kind of stuff and my days vary and my weeks vary so much i am enjoying all of it mm. and that that was my main goal my main goal is to enjoy what I do, be enthusiastic, and try and be the best at it. Got you. Because if not, it's not worth doing. Okay, got you. So I've got um, a question from YouTube here, which okay. I'm going to ask now following from what you just said. Um, would you pick being an influencer over medicine? Why can't I do both? I think you are doing both. To yeah. Be honest. That's it. I, I, can, I couldn't pick one of the two because mm -hmm. I enjoy the both so much and I think they help each other. Yeah. So I couldn't say, oh, I just want to influence or I mm. just want to do medicine. I feel like they both complement each other too yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. And another question. Um, do you feel like a lot is expected from you? Um, yeah, I do. I think I, from when I was young, just because of who I am in my family mm. and who my dad was and who his dad was and all of that stuff, I, do kn I knew the expectation from me was very high. Mm. But it was great because it pushed me to work mm. very, very hard from a young age, knowing that people expect great things from me yeah so i find that i like it as a challenge mm. more than anything okay so when i say expected i think what i've heard you say back if i can say this please tell me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. um it was pressure but it was good pressure oh yeah, yeah. there was a lot of pressure mm. when i was young i knew it even if it was silent pressure so people tried not to make it obvious yeah but there was a lot of pressure mm. and i knew it how, and... how did you deal with it though how did you deal with that Honestly, I've I've dealt I've I've enjoyed pressure my whole life. Mm. That's why I like sports like I that. I like that's what sports yeah. is, isn't it? Mm. I enjoy the competition. I enjoy the challenge. Like you can only do your very best and then leave it leave it leave it up there to God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Last few questions. Um, how can others push themselves out there on the socials, and how do you think it would help and boost other people's careers? I think find something you like. Find something you're really good at and really passionate about. Mm. I think that viewers and people watching can always see if you're enthusiastic and passionate yeah, about what lying, you do yeah, 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 uh, yeah. so if you find something you ge you genuinely love doing so like when i was making tiktoks and stuff i wasn't making any money for it or anything like that but i mm. genuinely enjoyed it because it was keeping me happy yeah and i think people resonated with that and that's why they jumped on board mm. and that's why it blew up so much i think if i was just doing it and i begrudgingly people would tell mm. 
like people tell this is it's not yeah. you. Yeah. You know when someone does something, you're like, yeah, this yeah, isn't yeah, you, yeah. it's not yeah, really your style. It's a bit It's, a it's bit forced. It's a bit it's forced. A bit forced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't force it. Just do yeah. something you love, be happy with it, mm. and people will catch yeah. on. So it seems that like you've always kind of liked social media then. You said you was yeah. quite active on Facebook back in the day. Mm-hmm. And that's how do you manage your actual, all your socials? Because you're on TikTok, Instagram. Are you on any other platforms? Um, you yeah. YouTube? Ma- Sorry? You have YouTube? I, I do have YouTube, but I don't, haven't used it as much. Okay. It's something I'm planning on building in the future. So yeah. TikTok, um, Instagram, Facebook. So Twitter, how do you manage YouTube. all of that stuff? Um, I manage a lot of it myself. I do have a manager. I do have an agent. Okay, so you've got help. Uh, yeah, and okay. she does a lot of managing, but she does a lot more of the business side. Got you. Other than the social side. Okay, awesome. So um, this is this is a question I wanted to know. What inspires you and what keeps you inspired? For me, the constant drive, the constant challenge. Mm. That's, that's what keeps me going the constant challenge being better every day I think my parents inspired me from from the jump but nowadays it's just every day can I do it can mm-hmm. I get back can yeah. I do this yeah can I do myself asking myself those questions to prove things that to myself to and to other people yeah. that got that you. keeps me going every day got you okay cool so I'm gonna start speaking on some of the other questions on sure. YouTube now um what is like a a day-to-day routine for you so let's say 9 a.m to 5 p.m what exactly do you do do you gym at 7 a.m honestly at 9 it changes every day okay. it, it, so what's like a typical I, day in the life i couldn't say i have a typical day okay like... tell us about yesterday then so so, yeah, so yesterday <laughs> i was um up north okay. i was waiting for a friend's um getaway one of my friends just got residency in canada okay nice. and is leaving so we did like a boys trip getaway up north in max like that's where mm. i came to from today mm. uh okay. obviously today I'm shooting tomorrow is a completely different day and I'm going to Kent. And then on Tuesday, I'm on Twilight, Twilight. So I'll be working from Twilight, uh, twilight shifts. So it's like shifts during, not a night shift or a day shift. It's like an in-between. So I'll be working from like three till midnight or three till one. 3 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So because twilight. of that, obviously I will wake up a bit later because mm. I won't sleep till about two, three. Yeah. So I wake up a little bit later and then work out, eat probably do some social media stuff do some admin stuff mm. and then get to work by three okay afternoon so Michael, yeah. i'm gonna go back to the question again when you say you get to work by three what's the first thing you do do you have to put your scrubs on you have to wash your hands what yeah yeah normally do? just uh obviously first of all get to get to your locker or wherever the change room is get changed obviously mask up get ready and then i'm basically on the AD floor Mm. You get on the A&E floor, you find out sometimes you'll be designated to work somewhere. Mm. So last week, they, I was designated to work in pediatrics, a and Peas is children. Children, yeah. And the other day, I was working um, in recess, which is really sick people in A&E. So oh, wow. you find out where you're working, mm. and then you go there to see who's next to be seen. You go see him. Yeah. Straight into it. Nice. So do you have something you have to tick off, like, one by one? or? Yeah, yeah. The department will have a list of the different patients. Got you. And based on where you are, you'll just see the next one in time order or priority. Mm. So some patients are sicker than others and they may get seen f- first. After they're triaged, when they come in, mm. triage is basically deciding where you're going to go, who's going to see you. We'll see who's the sickest patient or whose patient's been here the longest and then we'll see them. Mm. Okay. What's the maddest thing you've seen on like an a and ward? Um, actually, last week... Um, there's a young child I saw who was suffering with mental health issues mm. and she was under supervision by two carers, but she um, had a light bulb she broke and cut hers and ate the glass. Hmm? Yeah. She, wow. she, yeah, she broke the glass. With and, her hands? Yeah, and cut her wrist and ate the glass. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how, it seemed how, quite a crazy thing. How does that stuff like affect you if, if it does? It more affect her than me. Mm. Yeah, for me, I've, I've seen it all. Yeah. I've seen everything. So yeah. it's just another case where I need to make sure she's safe mm. and she's managed well. Yeah. From the mental health side and obviously the physical health side. Mm. Okay. And what's the funniest thing you've seen ever happen on the road or something that hasn't been as bad? Uh, it was when I was working in GP. Uh, when the show, I was working in uh, general practice, um, doing my rotations there. And the show had just come out, BBC Junior Doctors. And there was a patient who lied about a problem and complaint because she found out where I worked and she got into the surgery and I was like, okay, how can I help you? She said, there's nothing wrong with me. I just needed to beat you. This was easy as well. <laughs> but how did that make you feel, Rebecca? Tell us. Honestly, I laughed. That's why I was, I, I'm like, you're not serious. And she's like, yeah, uh, I'm perfectly it. healthy. So after like, you met you, then, then what? Then I was like, 
you shouldn't do that again. This is NHS time. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're patients to see. I'm flattered, but this isn't the way to do things. That's hilarious. She's like, yeah, I'm okay, really, really cool. sorry. But I had to get now. Yeah, yeah. That, that is pretty hilarious. Okay, cool. So what would you say to your five-year younger self? I'm not sure how old you are now. I won't ask. My five-year would younger self would have been five years ago when I just graduated. Mm. So it would have been like, I would have told myself, it's going to be a tough road. Mm. They're going to be down times. Okay, so that, just, just in case you didn't hear that. It's going to be a tough road. Yeah. Right. It's going to be a tough road. So, and I, I wasn't used to real pressure like that as a, as a doctor with that kind of responsibility. Mm. As a student, the pressure is more exams. You don't have that responsibility, but I did. And the pressure was really different and it was difficult to handle at the time. And I tell myself, just relax. Mm. These moments mm. will come and they will go. Okay. It's so not the you, end of the world. you were the one that kind of kept yourself calm yeah. and kept yourself yeah. in check kind of thing mm -hmm. okay okay cool where do you see yourself in five years honestly i'd like a show i'd like a medical show i'd like a, mm. a big medical platform where okay. we can entertain and educate a lot of people mm. using medicine and that's something i'm building on i'm also um uh writing a book nice. which will hopefully be going up next year on january time so i'd like that to come off i'd like to do another one um and I, I'm doing a lot of charity work uh, back in Nigeria mm. in terms of emergency and pre-hospital care. Okay. So I'd like to see, obviously, COVID-dependent, that stuff kind of blow up. And hopefully we can make a big difference in the health sector nice. back there. And that's something that we've done in five years. Awesome. Thank you for that. What, what's the book about, sorry? You didn't mention that. Well, I can't say the title. Know. I can't say the title, but it's about healthcare. Okay. It's about health. Okay. And combining health and Intense. happy life, yeah. So you're going to go with like sneak peeks into what doctors are really like? Kind of, yeah. So it's like a reveal tell all book then? Yeah. It's going to be hot. Mm, that's a good idea. Maybe we might do that as well, actually. It's going to be hot. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good idea. Okay, cool. So would you quit medicine completely? No. No. You wouldn't? No. Why? I enjoy it too much. I like it. Mm. I do it honestly because I like it, not because I have to. Mm. I don't feel like I have to do anything. Yeah, you, you want to I, do it. I want to, mm. and I enjoy doing it, so why yeah. would I leave? Yeah, okay, got you. Thank you for that. So you mentioned Nigeria. Mm -hmm. How would you like to see the medicine world out there change? I'd like to see a number of implementations into pre-hospital care and A&E there. I think there are a lot of new interventions that can happen which can save a lot of lives mm. before it gets to the stage where people are in hospital. and. That's what I'd like to see. And I'd like to see, you know, factor figures that showing data of how many people are actually saved and how many less deaths and less admissions they've had into A&E because of things that we've done. So mm. that's, that's hopefully a big goal of mine. Okay, lovely. Thank you. So I had someone on, on Instagram say, is he one of the chocolate show guys as well? Chocolate show guys? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't know. What, what's the chocolate show? Well, let's have a look on, the, on Google, shall we? Uh, yeah, you're going to have to enlighten me with that one. <laughs> chocolate show guys I don't want to explain and then it's wrong so these are the chocolate show guys oh alright <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay so they basically take their clothes off and they dance um, am I right? alright yeah okay so are, um, are you one of the I'm not, not officially but, <laughs> but back, at, like back at uni for charity I did do oh. something similar to that oh yeah Okay, well, um, it was for charity. Sunrise, like me, send him a DM. I'm sure he has some of that footage somewhere. <laughs> um, so I had someone else ask, Will you be my mentor? Yeah, perfect. Why not? Cool. So, Ade, send him a DM and you guys can hook up that way. Um, so, my student doctor asks, How do you manage the stress of being a doctor? Are you able to handle it? To handle it? Um, I, I have my own ways of coping, so I distance myself from medicine when it's getting too much. I'll switch off medicine. And obviously I come from a medical family mm. where people can like to discuss medicine. We won't. So I'll watch something funny or go play some sports or talk to my friends or mm. completely forget about what I'd seen during the day. Right. And that's the best way I handle stress. Kind of avoidance almost. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. So you kind of ignore it or you distract your mind to... Distract my mind. I distract yeah. my mind from it. Yeah, because certain things you can't ignore because there's certain stress yeah. where you have to deal with it. Mm. So how, so how do you deal with it? Uh, honestly, I have breathing techniques. I often reassure myself, affirmation. Mm. I often reassure myself that in the moment I can do this. Like, you've yeah. trained for this. This is your moment. Mm. You've got this. You sound like a um, uh, basketball coach. That's yeah, because like. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've grown up in the sporting world. Yeah, Everything yeah. kind of comes from that sport-driven mm. type of philosophy. Nice. 
Okay, lovely. Uh, you already answered that question. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go to the last few. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you inspire others? I hope so. I think so, and I hope so. I I do get messages of people saying you've inspired oh me to gosh, go do this. So yeah. Uh, yeah, and that uh, that makes me happy because it means I'm doing my bit mm. with my point. I feel like if you're in a situation, if you're blessed enough to be in a situation I'm in, mm. and you're not then inspiring others to mm. do the similar thing, you're kind of wasting it. Got you. Love so, that. so you're all about giving back, basically. Yeah. Love it. Okay. And what does an insp inspirational person look like to you? It's not what they look like, it's what they do. Mm. Yeah. They can look any type of way. They come in all shapes and sizes. But it's what they do mm. and how they inspire people. Got you. Thank you. And another one from YouTube. Um, did you ever want to give up the path? I think you mentioned that. No. You said you've always wanted to Yeah, I've always, I've always kind of wanted to be on this path. Yeah, I've never really seen myself giving yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and someone's asked for study tips. Ooh, probably not the right guy for this. Studying was a bit shambolic. Because um, I think for every... The thing is, people need to understand everyone learns a different way. Mm. So just because someone's learning by writing loads of notes or by doing a bunch of reading doesn't mean that that's the way you learn. I learned a lot visually through videos. I okay, learned a lot okay. on YouTube through videos and like, making videos of context for myself. I'm watching okay. them back. Yeah, I found that very helpful. So it wasn't the way my friends were learning, mm. but it's the way I needed. Way yeah, but learn. yeah, I found yeah. my technique, and I think everyone needs to find a technique that works for them. Mm. So usually, by the time you get to med school, you've already passed a lot of exams in GCSEs and A levels. Mm. So you know what kind of works for you in studying, mm. what doesn't work for you. So got you. So you had to kind of find your own yeah. way, basically. Okay, got you. Um, da, 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 da. What would you say to a doctor who's not? enjoying working as a doctor so they've gone through med school all of that five years of study and you don't enjoy it but i'd say, I'd say don't be so it? soon to judge mm. especially because the first few years are probably some of the most difficult ones mm. so if you first start working you're like i'm not enjoying this anymore give it time mm. give it time because after you've done those years medicine's so varied you it you will find something you like yeah you're bound to find something you enjoy there's so many different specialties. Yeah, try, once you've done your foundation years, try them. Foundation years is all about changing specialties mm. to try them anyway. Mm. So don't be so quickly to think, don't be so quick to think, oh, this is tough. I don't like Long. it. Yeah. 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 Stick at it. Okay. Okay. Um, so another question. If, say, you know you're in A&E, if mm. you wanted to now do, um, be a specialist in dermatology like Dr. Remy is, mm -hmm. what, would you have to then study for dermatology? So yeah, so she would have done, um, basically uh after medicine she would have done her first two years and then she would have done special medical training so okay. you could do special surgical training you could do special medical training you could do a uh, gp training or you could do a specific specialty training so you would do okay. your core medical training this so you do yeah it's changed up now so you'd have <laughs> to do your core medical training yeah. for a couple of years mm. where you do a number of different medical subjects such as maybe like cardiology gastroenterology rheumatology yeah gastro the digestive system. Digestive yeah. system. Yeah. And I can't remember the last one you said, but yeah. Yeah. And from there, after you've done your medical training, you have to do a few exams. Uh, yeah. And cool. then you go and sub specialize. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, do you want to end with a message to our viewers? Just say anything, maybe inspirational, encouraging um, to the panel. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope I may have inspired a few of you today. I, I want to send a message saying, Make sure you stick at it. Medicine is not always fun and games. It's not always rainbows and sunshine. And people need to understand that it is a tough career, but it shouldn't deter anyone from doing it. It is a challenge, but it's a challenge you'll like because the bigger the challenge, the greater the reward. That's what I always say. And medicine is challenging and hugely rewarding. So stick at it. Love that. Thank you so much. So guys, before we go, don't forget we have a giveaway up for grabs. So... Um, there should be a video playing on my left or my right now, but it's a Lenovo iPad. Is, is it an iPad called a Lenovo iPad? It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Lenovo iPad. We've got loads of highlighters, loads of study books and stuff like that. So make sure you go to our Instagram. Really, really easy to enter. You just basically tag a couple of people. So go to our Instagram. All the giveaway details will be on there. Um, and yeah, Dr. Emma Thart, do you want to tell everybody your, your social media handles so they can follow you? Yeah, well? you can find me on TikTok and Instagram at d-o-c-t-o-r dot e-m-e-k-a doctor dot emeka or on twitter at doctor underscore emeka or doctor emeka on youtube and facebook 
awesome thank you so much and you know us already guys um our website is houseofmedic.org the tiktok is we are house of medics instagram is we are house of medics linkedin and twitter is house of medics so thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you in a couple of weeks thank you